In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this rice eye pillow project. I'm first going to show you how to sew the eye pillow, and then I'm going to show you how to weave the pillow cover. So we're going to start out by making the pattern. Once you've made the pattern, we're going to cut it out. I'm just using a scrap piece of flour sack towel. Um, and you can use whatever you want. Once you have cut out your pattern, now it's time to sew it. I'm going to be leaving an opening on the side of the pillow so that I'll be able to pour in my rice and my lavender petal um, essential oil mix. I'm going to start out by doing a simple running stitch and then um, I'm going to be working all the way around. For this eye pillow, I'm using a cup of rice, two tablespoons of food grade lavender petals, and about 10 to 15 drops of lavender essential oil. I'm just going to mix these all together, and then I'll be putting them into my pillow. There are a couple of ways to get the rice into the pillow. You can use a spoon. It's probably easier if you use a spoon that's a little bit smaller than the one I'm using, or you can just go ahead and use a funnel. A funnel is probably going to be the easiest and less messy way of doing it, but use what you have on hand. All right, now that the pillow is done, it's time to weave the pillow cover. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wind a indirect warp for the warp of this project. Next, I'm going to thread my heddle all the way across. Once my heddle is threaded, I'm going to go ahead and dress my loom and wind it on to the back block. Now it's time to weave. I'm not going to be going by a pattern. I'm just going to be weaving as I feel like it, but I'm going to be doing it in a way that many new weavers are doing things that many new weavers who are new to creative weaving on a rigid heddle loom would feel relatively comfortable doing. I am adding in little pieces of shortened um, cut weft threads or the same thread that I'm using in the weft at various intervals and I'm just changing colors and just kind of going with what I feel inspired to do. I'm going to do a few pulled loops and then go back to just adding in pieces until I've reached the desired length of my pillow. Now, when you're making your pillow, you want to measure your cloth when it's not under tension so that you can make sure you weave a piece of cloth that's going to be long enough to cover your pillow. I begin and ended my weaving just by using a simple whip stitch. Sometimes new weavers get confounded by trying to learn how to do the hem stitch and they can't get it quite right and they get frustrated. It's okay. Just start weaving. That's the important part. Those other things like learning how to hem stitch perfectly will come. You can just whip stitch and tie a knot and your warp will be secure. Now, I wanted to put two separate projects on this warp and I realized as I was getting to the end of this first project that I was not going to have enough warp to be able to complete that second project if I put as much fringe on both of them as I had planned. So I ended up starting the second project very close to the first project which didn't leave me with a lot of warp to do much with once I cut the two apart from each other. So I decided to do something else with that warp. Instead of trying to tie knots or twist or braid the fringe, I just took a needle and wove it back into itself or back into the cloth. What you want to do is, especially if they're as short as these are, you're going to want to needle weave back into your cloth, being sure to skip a thread or two so that you don't accidentally unweave the warp that you've just woven. And then thread the, the warp threads into that needle and just pull them straight down into the cloth. They'll be secure and um, you have a nice finished edge. 
Now you may be thinking, okay, it's time to sew it together. Not so fast, it's time to wet finish your work. This is a part of the weaving process that a lot of us skip. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of the Dawn dish detergent into the water, swish it around and put my finish piece in. So I'm just gonna let it sit here for a while, swish it around, and then I'm going to rinse it out in clean water. I wanna wring it out a little bit and then I'm going to roll it in a towel to remove the excess water so that it'll dry faster. I'm gonna go ahead and trim off the threads where I joined in on the back. And I'm also gonna trim off the excess um, fringe that will not be on the finished project. All right, now it's time to sew it together. We're gonna just do a simple whip stitch on either side to join the two pieces together. And so you're going to whip stitch. I start at the fold at the bottom and whip stitch the top edge and I work the finished thread into the back of the top edge. I do the same thing on the other side always remembering to do a couple of extra stitches at the beginning and the end of my seam to make sure that they stay in there. You want to be especially, you want to do this especially at the top or the opening of your pillowcase because that's going to get the most use when you're pulling the pillow in and out of the case. The pillowcase is done. Now it's time to put the pillow inside of it. I find it's easier just to put a little bit of the rice on one side and then let that act as an anchor to pull the pillow into the pillowcase. Well, there you have it, a finished rice eye pillow and pillowcase. If you liked this project, please hit the like button and I will see you in the next video.